This is a mini lecture to discuss the concept of the this, T-H-I-S, keyword in Java and what it means in relationship to object-oriented programming. To get started, I'm going to talk a little bit about my car. In front of us, we have blueprints for a Honda Element. I really like my Honda Element. It's a fun car, and I'm really sad they're not going to be making them anymore. So, what is this? Well, this is a uh, potential car. In other words, this is some rendering of some basic blueprints for a Honda Element that I was able to find out on the internet. But this isn't my car. This is just a general concept of a Honda Element. Now let's take a picture of my car. And here we go. There's my Honda Element. And that's me sitting in it a couple summers ago enjoying the nice warm weather at the beach. Now, what do we do with these two concepts? First of all, we need to understand a couple things. That the car you're seeing with me in it is my car. It's Jason's car. It is a concrete instance of a Honda Element. You know, somewhere at a factory, someone built this car. It rolled off the assembly line. It went to a dealership. Uh, I went there and I bought the car. Um, but if we go back and take a look at the blueprint, what we have here in this blueprint is uh, a car that's yet to be built. It's a concept. It's a design document. It's something to be taken to the assembly line and uh, for equipment to be machined and people to learn how to assemble a, an automobile. This is not something you can drive. This is not something you could, well, I guess you could sell the idea of the car, but this isn't a car. It's a potential car. How does this relate to object-oriented programming? Well, the blueprint for the Honda Element is similar to the class files, the .java files that we're writing this semester. The class files define the concept of uh, our objects. They define the properties and behaviors that those objects have. When we go ahead and we call the new keyword, what we end up with is an actual object based upon that blueprint that we built in the class file. Just like I have an actual Honda element that was built from a set of blueprints uh, by a bunch of people on a manufacturing line. So, how does this relate to this idea of this? Well, when you're looking at my car and you see me in my car, it's pretty straightforward to say, well, that's Jason's car. Um, but if we go back to the blueprints and we look at these blueprints, whose car is this? Well, it's nobody's because it's a generic car. It's a generic concept of a car. So how do we say when we're just looking at blueprints, how does a designer of a car or an architect of a building say when they're talking about a blueprint that, hey, when this thing is actually made, what I want you to do is refer to you know, that specific uh, car that has rolled off the assembly line and not maybe say the one behind it. And a good example of where this might happen is, you know, think about something that's unique to each car that might roll off an assembly line. And what I've done here is I've gone ahead and I've written a class class that's going to help us work through this idea. So keep in mind that I've got a blueprint for a car and I drive an actual car that was built from some blueprints. So now let's take a look at some code. I have a class here and it's called Honda Element. So this is equivalent to our blueprints. This defines a really basic class um, for some generic abstracted concept of a car. Now, again, this is not a car yet. This is just the blueprints. I've yet to call new on it. I've yet to set it up in the driver. I've yet to build it. And so what you'll notice at the top is I've decided to just put two properties in this object, uh, two instance variables, one called mileage and one called gas to track the number of miles it's been driven and to track how much gas is in the tank. Uh, these are private to enforce encapsulation. Now, if we look, I've got a couple of different things going on here. Um, so this is not yet a class. Like, it hasn't been created. Like, it doesn't have a name. Like, I can't say that this is Jason's car. This is just a generic concept of a car. So when I create any instance of this class, so in other words, when I create any car, uh, Honda element item, by calling new on it from this class, what I want to do is to be able to set its mileage and set how much gas is in the tank. Uh, I'm just going to represent the gas tank as being a percentage full between 0 and 1. You know, you're going to notice in this um, constructor that I've gone ahead and I've written things a little differently. And what I've done is I've written this code to be very verbose. In other words, I'm not taking very many shortcuts in the Java language. I'm trying to write this uh, in a fashion that's extremely readable and goes um, and, and doesn't really try to be you know, concise in any way, shape, or form. Uh, because a lot of times I think people don't understand the this keyword because many times we don't need to use the this keyword. So a couple things here I've done to force this concept on us so that we can get this idea. First of all, you'll notice that I have a parameter named mileage and a parameter named gas. These are related to the constructor. But then you're going to say, well, wait a second, Jason. You have a, a property named mileage and a property named gas gas. How can the Java runtime uh, discern between two variables that have the same name? Awesome question. So here's why. Whenever you declare 
a variable inside of a method, that variable is locally scoped to that method. In other words, it only lives inside that method for the length of that method call. So this variable named mileage will only live long enough for these two lines of code to execute and then it'll be destroyed. And this variable mileage is going to be local to this method. Just like this variable gas will be created, it'll exist for the length of this method's runtime, and then when this method is over, it'll be destroyed. And you say, well, that's great. Um, but then how do I reference these class level variables that have the same name? Well, here's the deal. The this keyword is how an object refers to itself. Just like I would refer to myself as me, I would not probably refer to myself in the third person as Jason, because that would be like a bad episode of Seinfeld. But in this case, uh, many times we refer to ourselves as me or myself or I. Well, an object needs a way to refer to itself as well because objects oftentimes don't know their names uh, and we'll see why in a second. Uh, they just happen to know that they're you know, happily existing in this world and uh, they can refer to themselves as this in Java. Other programming languages use other uh, words. So the concept here is I have the keyword this and it's a way for saying look once you create a Honda element once you take this blueprint and you create an actual car, what mileage do we want to set? Well, we want to set the mileage for this instance of the Honda element. In other words, whatever Honda has just been created. It's like saying uh, me. So cr change my mileage to the mileage that's passed in and change my gas to the amount of gas that's been passed in. Well, what do they mean by my? Well, this, or in my case, this, it doesn't mean anything until this... Uh, concept or this blueprint of an object has been converted into an actual object via uh, the calling new in our calling code. <clears throat> so in this case, how can I discern between the passed in variables that have the same name and the instance variables that have the same name? Well, simply by saying this.mileage and this.gas is enough for this object when this constructor is run to say, oh, go to my instance variables this, go to this object's instance variables, and set the value for mileage. If you don't put this on that mileage variable, it refers to the locally scoped variable mileage. So just by saying mileage, what happens is uh, the compiler's lazy, in a sense. It's going to see a variable name, and it's going to say, well, are there any variables named mileage inside this method? Yes, okay, use those. It's not going to go look outside the methods right away. So what it'll do is, if I just say mileage, it'll say, oh, there's a variable in this method called mileage. Go get it. But if I say this dot mileage, it says, well, go to the instance variables and see if there's a variable called mileage. In other words, look at the current object, me, this, and get its mileage variable. Same thing for gas. Go to this object's instance variables and get its gas property and set it to the gas variable that has been passed in. So again, two variables, same name, different scope. And by scope, I mean where is that variable declared and who can see it. The same concept works for method calls as well. So if we scroll down, and you've probably been already looking at this, you'll notice that I've got a private Boolean method called check gas. And all this is going to do, I think this works, I didn't really test this too vigorously. Uh, it's going to look at the current instance variable gas for this current object and make sure that we've got more than 0.1% of gas in it and return true or false based upon that value. And you'll notice that on line 12, I have the ability to call that method using this.checkGas. Now, a lot of you are saying, well, geez, Jason, why did you... Uh, put this on there. I've never done that before. And here's the deal. The assumption is if you don't put the keyword this into uh, or in front of a method or in front of a variable, uh, the, the, the program runtime is still going to go ahead and look for methods. So what it's going to do is it's going to say, well, okay, um, look inside this method named drive. Is there a method declared inside this method named check gas? No. Okay. Now let me go out to the class level. Is there a method at the class level named check gas? Yes, there is. Call that method. If there wasn't, it would continue till it exits the class and it would give you an error because it'd say, hey, I can't find a check gas method. All you're doing by putting this in front of the method name is saying, hey, look inside of this current instance of the Honda element class and call the instance variable check gas. <clears throat> It's a way to basically um, help uh, and, and define in a more clear fashion the scope of, of the variable that you're calling or the scope of the method that you're calling. And again, up to this point, 
um, you probably have never not, or you may have never used the keyword this, because in many cases it's implied. You don't need to use it. Like if somebody came up to you and said, <clears throat> if somebody came up to you and said, give me twenty dollars, they're implying that they're talking to you because they're making a statement directly to you. They don't have to come up to you and say, Jason, give me twenty dollars. Uh, because they don't need to make that statement. They, they by making that statement to you, they, it's implied that they're, that they're dealing with you. Uh, so the idea here is this is a way that objects refer to themselves. Let's take a quick look at what this looks like in the driver. Inside of the Honda Element driver, what I've done is I'm going to create a car. I'm going to give it a name. So it's going to be of type Honda Element, and it's going to be called Jason's Element because it's my element. And I'm going to make a new Honda Element object, put 36,000 miles on it, give it a full tank of gas. Uh, and then I'm going to tell my Honda element to drive. So notice in my driver, in my driver, uh, I give my variables a name. Well, realize a couple things. Um, variables are really just named references uh, to memory locations. And so what's interesting is the Honda element object that's created by my constructor and that's returned and stored in this variable, it doesn't know that it's called Jason's element. Uh, it just knows that it's stored somewhere um, in memory, and it's referenced in the JVM uh, by you know a hexadecimal memory address. Uh, but on my end, because humans think better in terms of language than numbers, instead of having to call the explicit memory location for that object that's returned, we get the convenience of the programming language allowing us to name a variable and then call that variable by name. But what's interesting interesting is the object has no idea that it's called Jason's element. The object just knows that it exists on the heap at a specific memory location, uh, and we know that the variable called Jason's element actually maintains a reference to that memory location. So what I do then is I just say, hey, Jason's element, call your drive method. And when I call the drive method, this specific instance of the Honda element class um, goes ahead and reduces the gas uh, available in the car. And then it also goes ahead and um, uh, adds 30 miles to the odometer. It's not the world's best class, but it's just uh, to make a point. And so in our case, we refer to things in our calling classes by their name. But when we need to refer to the class uh, inside of the class, in other words, uh, when we don't have a concrete instance of the class, in other words, we haven't called new on it, we don't have a reference variable that we can just give the name of that reference variable, act, uh, the object, what I need to do is inside the class, whenever the class needs to refer to itself, whenever it says, hey, my variable mileage, my method check gas, I have to use the keyword this. So this is a way within a class for a, a data type which has been defined just like a blueprint and has yet to be created can refer to itself. 